Okay. Good uh, evening, everyone. Um, today we'll continue with the lesson, the open window. Window. I have to finish the syllabus. That is why I'm sending it to you during holidays. Okay. So it is optional. If you want to continue listening to it, you can. Otherwise, if you can do it yourself, then that is fine. <coughs> Sorry. So far, we have done about Framjan Natal, who goes to this uh, rural retreat where he has. Uh, to get a cure of a cure from bad nerves he's got bad nerves his nervous system is quite bad so he's going there to uh, get well there and since he does not know anybody his sister gives him some letters of recommendation or letters of introduction and then he goes to meet this uh, lady mrs sappleton who uh, his sister knew before his sister used to live here four years ago and she knew this mrs appleton so just for him to know someone in this area he went to meet her so as she uh, comes down from the upstairs rooms he comes across the niece of this mrs appleton and this niece sits with him and she talks with him and then in during the talk she tells him about a very very sad tragedy that happened with mrs sappleton where she lost her husband and her two brothers when they had gone shooting in the moor in the swamps she had lost them then they had been taken by the bog they had gone under the bog and then even their dead bodies were never found this is what uh, the niece told mr frampton nuttel Yes, so let's continue with that today. Today we'll do part two, and here on top you can see the introduction to the second part, or a short, very very short summary to the second part. It says, Mrs. Sappleton comes down at last, and it inadvertently confirms her niece's story. Tells her that yes, she had gone to the, they had gone to the bog for shooting. Framton tries to acquaint his host with the nature of his ailment. So he is trying to tell her what he, what sickness he has. Through the open window, he can see things that worsen his nerves. Through the open window, he sees something that his nerves become worse. His nerves, he really feels very, very nervous, and he feels he's getting even more sick when he sees something from the open window. So let us continue with the lesson today. So we have this uh, niece telling the story to Mr. Frampton, and then she broke off with a little shudder. With a little shudder means with a little shake. She, ooh, like that she did. It was a relief to Frampton when the aunt bustled into the room with a whirl of apologies for being late in making her appearance. It was a relief. So Frampton f found a relief when the aunt entered the room and. The aunt entered the room, bustled into the room. Bustled means very noisily. She came into the room with a whirl of apologies. She kept saying, "Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm so late. I'm so late. I'm very sorry." She said to Mr. Frampton, "I hope Vera has been amusing you." She said, "Vera." So now we come to know the name of this girl. Her name is Vera, and so the aunt said, "I hope Vera has kept you good company, and she's been talking to you." She has been very interesting," said Frampton. This was the word that Frampton used. Interesting. Yes, I hope you don't mind the open window," said Mrs. Sappleton briskly. Quickly, she said, "I hope you don't mind the open window. My husband and brothers will be home directly from shooting, and they always come in this way." So now she had advertently confirmed what her niece had said. She told Mr. Frampton that my husband and my younger brothers will be coming home soon, directly from shooting, and they always come in this way. Now, remember what Vera had told Mr. Frampton that the aunt has uh, still believes that the her brother and her brothers and her husband are alive, and they will come. And when she said this, it confirmed what Vera told Mr. Frampton. They've been out for snipe in the marshes today. Snipe is a kind of water bird that lives in the marshes. The marshes is not dry land; it is very, very watery land. And this is a bird like crane, crane-like bird, which lives in the marshes. And supposedly, her husband, that is Mr. Sappleton, and her two younger brothers had gone to hunt for these uh, snipes. And she said they will be back soon. They've been out. For snipe in the marshes today, so they'll make a fine mess over my poor carpets. She said they will be walking all over my carpets, and they will destroy it. So like you men folk, isn't it? She said, "Oh, you men are all alike. 
you don't care about the cleanliness of the house she told mr uh, frampton nuttall she rattled on cheerfully rattled means she continued to talk she went on and on cheerfully very happily about the shooting and the scarcity of birds scarcity means very very less birds were there these days and that is why uh, hunting took time and the prospects for duck in the winter scarcity of birds and the prospects to eat ducks for winter was getting lesser and lesser because these ducks were not more available in the marshes it was very difficult there was a scarcity of them there was very very there were very very few birds like this in the marshes to frampton it was all purely horrible Frampton was getting very very frightened listening to Mrs Sappleton and what she was saying because she said that my brothers and my husband will be returning soon and they will come in through the open window window just uh, does confirming what Vera told Mr Frampton Nuttall in the first part so he is getting frightened he is getting afraid and nervous and his nervous system is again becoming worse So in the picture here we have Mrs. Sappleton coming and uh, meeting with uh, Mr. Frampton Nuttall, and we have Vera sitting in the on the sofa. Then we have some word meanings here. If you can see that, bustled means enter the room noisily. Whirl of apologies means many apologies in quick succession. Very quickly she was saying sorry, sorry, I'm so sorry, many times. Then snipe, a water bird that lives in marshes. Rattled on means went on and on and on. Yes, scarcity of birds means no birds or very few. Scarcity means acute shortage. There is scarcity of onions in the market. It means there is there are hardly any onions in the market. So please learn these word meanings as well. So what Mr. Frampton was listening or hearing, what uh, Mrs. Sappleton was saying, he was it was really all very very horrible to him. To Frampton, it was all purely horrible. he made a desperate but only partially successful effort to turn the talk on a less ghastly topic he was conscious that his hostess was giving him only a fragment of her attention and her eyes were constantly straying past him to the open window and the lawn beyond so he was trying very very desperately to change the topic this ghastly this horrible terrible topic but then and then he saw his host that means mrs appleton's eyes continually going towards the open window she was not giving him her full attention continuously her eyes were going to the open window and the lawn beyond lawn is a kind of garden so her eyes were continuously going there it is certainly an unfortunate coincidence that he should have paid his visit on this tragic anniversary and it was a terrible coincidence he thought that he why did he choose this particular day to come and meet mrs sappleton on this tragic anniversary on the day that her brother and her brothers and her husband were supposed to return it was like an anniversary so he felt terrible and horrible that he chose this particular day to come and meet her he could have come on any other day but then he chose this day the doctors agree in ordering me complete rest an absence of mental excitement and avoidance of anything in the nature of violent physical exercise announced frampton so frampton was trying to tell her what problem he was having what ailment or what sickness he was having he was telling her the doctors have advised me complete rest and to avoid any mental excitement to avoid any mental stress and to avoid anything which is violently physical physically violent he said he's been told to avoid all those such kind of things who labored under the tolerably widespread delusion that total strangers and chance acquaintances are hungry for the least detail of one's ailments and infirmities their cause and cure so he wasn't thinking that people don't like to listen to what sickness you have and what you're going through whether you are sick or not sick people don't like to listen to all that kind of talk so even if you are sick someone asks you how are you you say you are fine i am fine thank you you don't say oh i am so sick my body is paining isn't it so but here he was doing all that was wrong and telling her everything about his sickness because his mental state of mind was getting worse he was feeling very very afraid because mrs sappleton had confirmed what the niece had told him so he was getting stressed out here 
On the matter of diet, they are not so much in agreement, he continued. And he even began talking about what he was and what he was not supposed to eat, his diet. No, said Mrs. Sableton in a voice which only replaced a yawn at the last moment. The way she said no showed that she was not interested to listen to what Mr. Frampton Nuttall was telling her about his sickness and about his diet and about all those things. She was least bothered. Then she suddenly brightened into alert attention, but not to what Frampton was saying. Suddenly she became very, very alert brightened into alert attention. She, her face shone with happiness, but not to what Frampton was telling her. Here they are at last, she cried. Oh, she said, oh, here they are, just in time for tea. And don't they look as if they were muddy up to the eyes? So she saw her husband and her two brothers through the open window. And she told Mrs. Frampton, see, look at them. They look so muddy. It seems they are dirty up to their eyes. And then you can see in the picture how Mr. Frampton Nuttall turned to see and he saw those three people walking there plus the dog. The spaniel also was coming. He could see them through the open window. So Mr. Frampton Nuttall turned and the look that he, the, the scene that he saw outside the open window made him shiver. Frampton shivered slightly and turned towards the niece with a look intended to convey sympathetic comprehension. Sym sympathetic comprehension means understanding and showing sympathy. Showing, oh my God, you were right, yes. Now Mrs. Suppleton is thinking that they are back. The child was staring out through the open window with a dazed horror in her eyes. Even the girl, the Vera that is, the niece, even she looked out of the window with horror. She's, she was showing that she was very, very horrified. She was scared. The look that she had in her eyes. In a chill shock of nameless fear, Frampton swung round in his seat and looked in the same direction. And then when uh, Frampton saw this girl also looking out, he turned swiftly, very fast he turned and he looked out of the open window. In the deepening twilight, three figures were walking across the lawn towards the window. They all carried guns under their arms, and one of them was additionally burdened with a white coat hung over his shoulders. A tired brown spaniel kept close at their heels. So this is what he saw. It was becoming evening, and he saw three figures, three people walking across the lawn, walking across the garden and coming towards the window and they all had guns under their arms and one of them also was additionally burdened means he was also carrying a white coat which was hung over his shoulders and then we also see a dog a tired brown spaniel kept close at their heels now remember all these three people and this dog also was supposed to have been disappeared had disappeared according to the niece according to Vera the three people and the dog had disappeared in the bog but now he could see them coming through the uh, coming towards the open window noiselessly they neared the house they kept coming nearer and nearer the house and then a hoarse young voice chanted out of the dusk i say bertie why do you bound so he heard this voice coming from one of those three people coming from one of those three figures and this voice was saying i say bertie why do you bound why do you jump Somebody was saying this line. That is the end of part two. Here we have some comprehension check. What did Mrs. Sableton say about the open window? She said that her brother, brothers and her husband usually came in through the open window. That's your answer. Depending on the marks, you can elaborate more on that. The horror on the girl's face made Frampton swing round in his seat. What did he see? Very, very simple. What did he see is in the last paragraph of part 2. Now, part 3 will be coming to you very, very soon. Yes, maybe by tomorrow I'll send the part 3 to you. Uh, so, in the meantime, you reread or you rather read again this lesson. If it is still not clear to you, then let me know. Okay, part 3 is coming to you soon. So, bye-bye. Have a good day. Enjoy your holidays.